I'm Mary James, Director of Publications at Passive House Accelerator, and this is my house. I've been doing a step-by-step interfit on it since 2009. I had owned the home for about 20 years before that, and it was super uncomfortable in summer and pretty cold in winter as well. Um, It had aluminum sliders, no insulation in the walls, and uh, honestly, the walls were more theoretical than actual. I mean, the wind would just whip right through them. The first time I got my house blower door tested, I was working at Lawrence Berkeley National Lab at the time, and so as part of their research, they did a blower door test at my house, and it took two blower doors just to get enough pressure to get a reading because my house was so leaky, and it's not that big a house. It wasn't until I learned about Passive House that I actually figured out how to make it airtight in a way that made a difference. Working with Bronwyn Berry, a Passive House architect in 2009, first we coated all the siding in Stogold to make it airtight and then wrapped it in rock wool insulation because I, even then I was starting to worry about fires and then I put new siding, fiber cement siding on top of that. On the roof, used metal sips to really improve the insulation in the roof. So that was very comprehensive, but it was also just one step in the process. I've been working toward electrifying my house also. At the time, my heat and hot water was supplied by a gas appliance. Now I have a sand and heat pump that does both. Very excited. My house is fully electric. And I am now working further steps on fire hardening, as we will see when we go outside. So I'm working on the next step of my fire hardening process. And I'm working with architect James Bill on it. And he's going to tell you about our fire hardening work, especially starting with boxing in eaves. The eaves used to be big beams coming out from the the, the ceiling in the, in, the, in, the, in the house, and they came out, and then there was the decking boards on top of that. So what the fire department is worried about is that embers go like this, and they start to accumulate under the eaves and start to burn the eaves, which then leads the fire into the house. It's because you're expecting large winds. So we put they cut off the bottoms of these beams, which take a lot of work, and we added cement board going across. We also have a intumescent paint type um, screen, a vent into that that eave, vent, eave area. Intumescent paint is important on the um, vent screen because what that does is when it gets hot, it um, it sort of expands and therefore blocks the any embers being able to get up into the eave area. We've changed the vents on this house for the the vents for the HRV have also the intumescent um, paint honeycomb inside of them. Um, and so we oversize those vents to be able to allow because it does constrict some of the flow, so we to have the proper flow. Um, we're changing out the vents for the Lunos and the ADU to have them also have an intumescent paint. One of the things that we're dealing with are just little places where embers can get in and catch on the foam. So this SIP system with the metal roof has these ridges and at the ends of the ridges is a hole. And so that's the only thing that's not plugged with metal. So we made manufacturing some small little metal plugs to stick in each hole. In 2009, 2010, when I was doing that part of the retrofit, the Enerfit standard wasn't really out yet. And so we were aiming for the new construction air tightness standard, 0.6. And I think we got to 0.63. I mean, it was really close, which is below the one air change per hour that is uh, for the standard for retrofits um, with the Enerfit standard. So that was really a great effort on everybody's part. And it has made such a difference to the comfort of my house. We have no air conditioning and we are in California where there have been heat waves, but it never has gotten above 75 indoors. 
even more importantly for smoke events, which are becoming more prevalent, the airtightness of the home prevents smoke from getting inside the house. This is our hot water heat pump. Um, it supplies hot water for domestic hot water, and it also supplies hot water for our, heat, our space heating. Um, it uses a CO2 as the refrigerant, which is low global warming potential. We have a sensor that figures out how much hot water we used in the previous day, and it makes sure that we have that much and more hot water in our storage tanks to be able to cover that amount of usage. During the winter, we just set the thermostat at 70 degrees and forget about it. And this, I've never been able to do that before because I was always conscious of how much energy was I using. But it's just been transformative in terms of comfort. This is our Zender heat recovery ventilator. It's a heat recovery ventilator because we don't have humidity in here, so we don't really need the, the uh, ERV. We added a smoke um, filter when we when we had started having the big smoke events here in California. It has a pre-filter with carbon and then a regular filter for the part particulates. So when there is a um, smoke event, we'll, we'll plug that in, we'll stick install the two filters, and so the air will then come in the pressure won't be constrained because of the added filters, but because there's a little fan in there. So it keeps the flow at the right speed, and we basically have, you know, have cleaner air. As we are working on the fire hardening, which is going on outside right now, but you can't really hear it because indoors, we have um, a much quieter environment, which is always a great thing. But really, we have security, peace of mind about uh, being able to better survive fire events and certainly smoke events. And we did contact our insurance company to see if would they reduce our premiums at all because of all the fire hardening work that we've done on top of our passive house retrofit. Our insurance company did not say they would give us a reduction in premiums, but what they did say was, we're much less likely to drop you. Considering I'm in California and Allstate and State Farm have canceled supplying any new policies in the state of California, it's getting much more expensive and harder to find insurance. It's really a great protection to be able to be in your house, be comfortable, secure, and not worry as much about are the insurance companies gonna still find my house worth insuring? And so far the answer has been yes, which we are really happy to report. Thank you.